Morning guys, about uh, 5.20 a.m. Got a small project that I wanna work on today. But first we're gonna have a little class. I'm um, hoping to uh, help educate you on something that I've learned that may help you with your LMTV down the road. All right. As you can see, I've got a couple of different uh, hydraulic pumps sitting on the table here. One of them is the OEM one, which is this one. And this is an aftermarket one. I'm going to explain to you the differences between the OEM one and the aftermarket one. All right. The first thing I think I'm going to explain is our steering box and uh, just a quick overview of how that works. Uh, there's a couple of flow charts here that I pulled off of a PDF. Um, this one in particular shows the system at rest. So let me see if I can do this without making my eyes go googly. You got your reservoir, which goes into our uh, hydraulic pump, which is actually our steering pump. There's a little piston that floats around up in here, which I'm going to explain in a minute. But right now the system basically flows through and out and back to the reservoir, okay? Now, when you put a demand on the system by turning the steering wheel left or right, in this case it's clockwise. So they're turning the steering wheel clockwise. This would be your steering shaft that goes up to your steering wheel. You're creating a demand on the system which opens this piston up and flows through and to whatever side you're uh, putting pressure on to steer. So uh, there's a ZL which is Z left and ZR which is Z right. They're just showing that the fluid builds up pressure here. All the red is pressure. So it builds up pressure here, pushes this piston up, and the sector shaft uh, goes left or right on the drop arm to control our steering. So this right here is a key element that's not in the aftermarket pump, and I'm going to explain that to you here in a minute. All right, let's see if I can do this and still be able to show you guys what's happening here. All right, we're gonna take this pump apart so you can see the inside of it. Those Milwaukee ratchets have a lot of torque. Well, I didn't want to do that, but that's fine. Okay. So you got two halves here. You got your rotor side, which is uh, where the vein pump is at inside there, the gear pump. And then you've got this side. And you see how this um, mates together like this? So... Let me see if I can orient this so you guys can see so they're both sitting the same way. So this is basically how it sits, but it's flipped. This is the pressure hole that goes down to this fitting that feeds the steering. And there is a little, um, well, let me open that up too so you can see that. So you've got a spring and a cup. And then on this side, you've got an O-ring boss blank. And 
then you have a little, see if I can get it out of here. You got this little piston, right? So this piston sits in here and the spring puts pressure on it. And uh, you see this little area right here? Come on camera, focus. This little area down here. So as you can see, that area with the spring putting pressure on it is closed off. So this piston, this piston has that area shut off. So you see you've got two little sections there. It shuts that area off. Um, when there's a demand, so right, right now it's basically recirculating back to the top. Um, when there's a demand, the piston moves and forces all the fluid through here. So all this does is it's basically, it's just a regulating valve. So using my best guess, since 3.8 fittings can only flow like a maximum of 10 gallons per minute on a good day, I'm guessing that this little piston creates a flow regulation of about, oh, anywhere from four to seven gallons per minute. And that's the sweet spot for the steering, right? So let me get this put back together and I'll explain this a little bit uh, better for you. Oh, I'll show you one more thing here on the pump. All the pump is, it's set up like a supercharger. It's got um, gears in it that rotate and force the fluid. So pretty simple design. All right. And this is the uh, spec sheet for the pump that I bought. They are um, made in Ukraine and they have a really good uh, track record. They're pretty robust. The flanges are thicker on it than the OEM unit. Uh, lots of good things. I did some research on the internet and uh, found out some information about these. The main difference in these is they don't have that flow regulation valve in them that the um, OEM pump has, but bear with me for a moment and I'll explain. So if you remember in previous episodes, I've got a... Uh, the hydraulic pump is going into a flow divider. So these flow dividers, basically you have an input and two outputs. And it guarantees a 50-50 split. So it's basically, it's a flow divider. Very similar to a flow regulator because what the regulator is trying to do is match fluid rates. So this pump, um, if you look at it, Funny enough that the uh, maximum working pressure is pretty much the same or a little bit less than um, the pressure relief valve that's inside our steering boxes. There's a uh, pressure relief valve here, which is number 18, right here in our steering boxes. So if the PSI gets too high, it just dumps it out the, back to the reservoir. So basically what I'm doing today is I'm putting this pump on and uh, I want to regain some of the flow rate that was lost when we did a 50-50 split for the air conditioning system. That's all I'm doing. Um, there is an increased steering effort at idle, but as soon as you get to about a thousand RPM, it's gone. So I'm just trying to restore that lost little bit of uh, steering uh assistance using this pump. So basically what you're looking at here is uh, you got a counterclockwise pump and the max speed is 3000 RPM. Remember our engine max RPM is about 2600 RPM. And you've got, um, let's see here, the PSI rating is 2300 to 2600. So it's right in line with all of the components that we're using in the system here. And we're basically trying to make them all match. So what I'm going to be doing today is taking everything apart and uh, making it more permanent. I'm going to be installing an aluminum heat sink plate for all of the components to mount to. So we'll have this and the three-way valve on the plate. Um, the output of this at 2000 RPMs is 11.37 gallons per minute. Um, if you want to figure it up to 2600 RPM, which is the maximum speed our engines run at, 
uh, you could do that. It would end up being 15 gallons per minute approximately at 2600 RPM. <clears throat> Keep in mind that the flow regulation valve on the uh, OEM pump is probably trying to maintain four to seven gallons per minute. Let's divide that by two. So you got 15 divided by two is about seven and a half gallons per minute. Driving on the freeway at 60 miles per hour, we're at about 2000 RPM. 2000 RPM uh, is about 11 and a half, which ends up being right around five gallons, five and a half gallons per minute. Um, which is the sweet spot for both the air conditioning compressor and the steering box. So, fingers crossed that uh, putting this pump in brings everything back into the normal range. And uh, this company actually makes any flow rate you can imagine for these pumps, all the way from 1 to 5 gallons per minute, all the way up to uh, 4 to 18 gallons per minute for this shaft size. And it's an SAE A. Uh, which is two bolt mounting flange, which is what our trucks use off of the air compressor. So should work out good. I had to buy a bunch of extra fittings. Well, not too many, just for me to know that I could put this together, I bought some extra fittings, but um, I guess we'll get started on that. Well, I got out the old pump, which is still in good shape. All of the pieces I wanted to remove. Uh, I got the new pump mounted. It works great. I swapped out the existing hardware on there for some grade 8 stuff that I had lying around. So that's an improvement. And then I tightened up the Allen mount bolt down below there. It was a little bit loose. And uh, now we're going to get ready to set this up and run some lines. Alright. Got the uh, brackets mounted on there and the actual components if you remember uh, in that area previously there's a uh, airlift hydraulic ram that ties down the suspension and lowers the truck and I know it looks like it's touching but it's not there's space there can you believe it Anyhow, it's kind of on a nice little suspension plate and uh, should provide some cooling for the fluid because it's getting it out of the engine bay. But I think this is going to be a good spot. Now I just have to uh, reconfigure the uh, pressure relief valve. I'm going to get that set up a little bit different and then uh, start running lines. I'm not doing any time lapse on this because it's very... Uh, much me standing there staring at stuff and trying to see what's going to work and then about five minutes worth of work so it's not worth filming the time lapse well guys after about three or four hours of dilly dallying around i think i got about this about licked i am missing one fitting that the vendor sent me that's the, the wrong one so i had to use a a t and then cap it off i'll have to change that out when it actually gets here um Aside from that, I got everything mounted, all the lines ran, I double checked all the connections on the fittings and the hose clamps. That's the uh, return line manifold, I guess you could say. Um, only thing I got to do is lower the cab, check clearances, make sure everything's got some breathing room. And uh, put some cherry syrup back in and start it up and keep my fingers crossed that nothing goes blow to the smithereens. So. Um, let's go over the routing here. So this is the inlet it goes to a 2500 PSI relief valve Which goes into a 50 50 flow divider half of that Goes to the air conditioning system. So you've got Normally it goes into the return line, but when it switches it will go through The compressor motor and the compressor motor goes back to the return line and then to the cooler and then into the reservoir so uh, the other side just goes straight through to the steering. So as you can see here, this goes straight through to the steering box right there. Keep in mind this area normally had that giant uh, hydraulic ram here with a bunch of hoses and pins and stuff running off of it. So I just reutilized this area um, the best I could. And all of this stuff is kind of, as you can see, when the wheel turns, nothing is really going to happen because that's normally occupied by that ram that kind of sits right here. So 
other than that um, probably gonna have a little bit of lunch do some cleanup and then start filling this thing up with fluids and then we'll test it all right I went through and uh, tightened up all the fittings and double checked the hose clamps I'm hoping I didn't forget anything but chances are I probably did I'm gonna remote start the truck and stand back because if something blows I don't want to be in its path here we go to tighten up fitting and it's shooting cherry juice everywhere Try that again. Standing anywhere near it for a bit. I'm just gonna get away. I'll come back after it's been idling for a little bit. Well, it seems like everything's back to normal. Um, the steering effort is uh, decreased quite a bit at idle, and uh, the air conditioning is blowing out super cold air at idle. And uh, when you bring the RPMs up, everything kind of stays at the same effort level and the air conditioning uh, compressor obviously it picks up some BTUs but um, yeah I think I might have uh, I might have solved it fingers crossed I haven't taken it for a test drive yet but I think uh, I think that solved the 50-50 um, split I gained back some of my uh, flow uh, from installing the air conditioning system and I don't see any more leaks nothing blew up yet so uh, that's a good thing all right guys I think that's gonna be it for this episode uh, I don't see any abnormal leaks or the behavior of the vehicle isn't doing anything odd steers just fine uh, air conditioning works um, no hot spots that I can see but then again it's only you know 60 degrees outside so I wouldn't expect any of that those issues to come up until it starts to get a, a bit warmer out but uh, I will leave a link down in the description for this pump uh, this is the 3 to 17 gallon per minute version for those of you that are following along and trying to recreate this system other than that I think that's gonna be it if you guys like this video give me a thumbs up if you're not subscribed yet I'd love to have you as a subscriber got some interesting stuff coming up I think you guys will like but other than that take care guys I'll catch you next time see you later bye bye